Hey everybody, I'm Bill, the Hill Country Prepper, and I want you to be informed so that you can be prepared. Today I want to talk about what kind of prepper are you? But before I do that, why don't you go ahead and press down on that thumbs up button and give this video a like. And if you're not a subscriber yet, why not? Go ahead and subscribe right now. And don't forget to hit that notification bell too. That way you'll get notified each and every time I upload some new content. So do that right now. The way I see it, there really are four types of, of preppers. Four types of, of individuals or groups that have the preparedness mindset. And you could almost say that these kind of run on a on a spectrum, if you will. They you know from from one extreme to to another. Or maybe most extreme to a less extreme is another way of maybe looking at it. Or more prepared, less prepared. I don't know. First off, I think we need to talk about those that are considered the, the doomsday preppers. Now, you've probably seen the television show, just like most of us have, that was on, uh, I think it was Discovery or National Geographic or something. Anyway, doomsday prepper, preppers. Doomsday preppers are the individuals that believe that there is going to be a total catastrophic collapse of everything. Infrastructure, supply chain, even though it's, that's we're pretty close to that now. The doomsday preppers are the ones that are, are buying the bunkers and they're, they're, they've got the modified bug out vehicles and they're probably the ones that are associated with a mutual assistance group. And I'm not saying there's anything bad about a mutual assistance group, not at all. But these are the individuals that have gone to uh, extreme levels. And again, being extreme in your preparedness is not a bad thing. I'm just kind of classifying these different, different levels of, of preppers. So the doomsday preppers are the ones that have, have really hardcore at it. And if there's a nuclear blast in their area, they're going to survive it because of their bunkers and everything that they've set up. That's the doomsday prepper. Next is what I, the survivalist. Now, the survivalist is, they may stock up on things from time to time, but they're more into living off of the environment around them. Uh, this includes bushcraft. Uh, they have those type of skills where you can drop them in the middle of a forest with nothing but a, a butter knife and a spool of thread, and they're going to thrive, okay? They, they've got the skills. Uh, they've got the knowledge on foraging and, and tool making and such where they can build a shelter and they can snare some 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 animal to eat they can find water they can filter water they can survive these are the survivalists um, and again it's good to have that knowledge as well the next level uh, is the homesteader now I I know some homesteaders uh, uh, there's some great homesteaders on this platform. Um, Keith Brooks is one of them. Ashley and Amy Martin are also some great homes. There's lots of them. And, and they bring a lot to the prepper community and there's a lot to learn from those, those homesteaders. Now, personally, I had family members growing up that were homesteaders and uh, retired military, uh, my aunt and uncle, and they had purchased about 15 acres of, of, of farmland and they, they had their garden and they had their fruit trees and they had their livestock. They had alternative uh, energy and wood burning stove and they, they milked their own cows and they had their fresh milk and they made their own cheeses and they made their own homemade wine and they did very well. Uh, they ate very healthy. I spent many a summers out on their farm planting, picking fruit, working with the animals. 
it's a great experience and um and now they were tied to the grid they they were not completely off grid and that's another element of homesteading uh some people are homesteading and they're completely off grid uh, others uh are not off the grid um they use their alternative energy sources to supplement uh their their grid tie so they were they were pushing back to the grid in other words but uh they grew their own food uh they they would go to this to the store to buy animal feed and stuff like that they did a lot of barter with the people in their church because they had such an abundance that they were able to do that uh and trade with other people uh so that's homesteading and and it, whether on grid or off and then that kind of brings us to the next level which is kind of where i am uh, and where probably most of you are is we're what I consider to be the everyday preppers. You know, I have a job. Um, I live in a community. Um, I, I don't have a bunker, but that doesn't mean that an everyday prepper could not have a bunker. Um, I could have a bug out vehicle and be an everyday prepper. Uh, you know, it's always smart to have your vehicle prepped, to have a bug out bag. To have a place to go, to have a bug out location, nothing wrong with, with belonging to a group of like-minded people, a mutual assistance group. But for general appearances, I mean, I my kids go to school and I live in a community and I have a job, but then I'm also, like most of you, I'm paying attention to my surroundings and I am stockpiling the tools and the materials and the medicines and the supplies that I need in case something happens. And again, we just saw with this current pandemic that we're in that it doesn't take much for something to happen and you should be prepared. You should always have food, medicine, tools. You should have the skills. You should have the fuel. You should have the means to be able to Power your home from some other means than the grid, whether that be solar, solar panels or a generator or a wind turbine or something. But I'm an everyday type of guy. And if you're watching this, you're probably an everyday type of person as well. But you've got the sense to look forward, look at the situation that's going on. And you're looking for bargains at the grocery stores. And you're looking for the best deal to get at the hardware store. And you're getting the things that you need. Again, you might not have a bunker. You might not have a EMP hardened bug out vehicle. But you're thinking about being prepared for what might happen. Guys, that's kind of my rundown. Doomsday, survivalist, homestead, everyday prepper. Leave a comment down below and tell me what kind of prepper are you and where are you at in your preparations right now? If something were to go down tomorrow or next week or next month, would you be prepared? I want to know. You guys have a blessed day. Hill Country Prepper. Thanks.